past things. And in the later on part, we discussed about uh, we discussed about what is the path to complete your cloud cloud courses. What are the different cloud courses that are available, and what the companies are looking for. And then we have seen the syllabus of this course, what we are going to cover. And later on, we discussed about uh, some question and answer sessions has been gone. So with that, we have winded up the study session. Today, we will be discussing about a new topic. We are we are about to enter into the concepts of uh, uh, computing. I will. I am not going to say about cloud computing or else servers and all the things. The basic computing tasks, the basic computing concepts. So I'm just entering into these concepts. So once we have understand, once you understand all these concepts, then we can dive into the AWSs, networking, and all the things. So first, the basic structure is here. You need to understand the basic concepts. So what are the basic concepts that you need to understand? The first thing is whenever you are, whenever you are into the company. So there are two types of uh, like there are two types of uh, services or else there are two types of organizations IT organizations and non IT organizations. So IT services IT based service companies IT service companies and uh, non IT companies will be there. So now as you are studying or else as you are entering into the IT sector. So as you are entering into the IT sector, you need to have a basic understanding about how IT service companies will be working. If you understand that, then we will go further into the concept. Now, whenever there is an IT service company, IT service company, the name itself indicating that the IT service company, name itself indicating what it is indicating. Okay. It is going to provide some services and those services are IT services. IT services in the sense, information technology related. Information technology like you are uh, what I can say, it can provide you, it is nothing but an interaction between the customers, whoever, like not only that, it is going to provide maximum IT service companies will be like uh, service oriented, service oriented in the sense they are going to develop some applications, they are going to provide some service, server accesses and all the things for the cl clients and for the customers and all the things. First of all, you need to understand what is this IT service company. Now, <clears throat> for example, whenever there is an IT service company. This is the company. Now, inside this company, there will be so many employees will be there. Just for example, uh, TCS is one of the IT service company. TCS or Infosys or Wipro, anything. So it is an IT service company or else IT company. Just make it as an IT. Now, inside this company, we will have so many, so many different, different types of different, different departments will be there. So admin department, HR department, these are some of the general departments. When you come to the IT side, I, when you come to the IT side, in IT side, in general, there are mainly, there are two types of departments. One is development department. One is the development team. And the other one is operations team. One is the development team and the other one is operations team. So this is the development team and uh, the other one is the operations team. Okay. And the other one is the operations team. Okay. So again, inside this development team and operation team, we will have some subcategories. I will tell you about that. So when you come to the, when you are trying to understand about this, what is meant by, uh, so I will make it as a dev team. Simply I will make it as dev. Okay, it is dev team. Okay. And this is, uh, I will simply call it as an administration team or else you can call it as an ops team or else operations team. Okay. Now, when you are searching this, when you are seeing this, the IT service company is divided into development team and operations team. Again, the development team is further divided into depending upon the application that they develop. They might be developing the application on Java language, on the Java programming language. Then there will be a Java development team. And if the uh, if uh, some of the developers are working with the Python based application, then there will be a Python Python development team. And if there are some of the uh, developers who are working on Node.js, React.js, Angular, so there are so many development teams which are you know, .NET, .NET with the help of .NET, they will be developing some of the applications depending upon that. Again, the development team is further divided into so many other teams. 
and here you will have like a database management team in the development team only you will have the database management team okay and uh, what i can say for the web application there will be there will be the front end team ui team like uh, they are going to develop the front end applications and then what i can say there will be some somebody who are developing the uh, who are developing HTML web applications, bootstrap web application, depending upon the languages that you are known. So depending upon that, there are so many, so many development teams are divided into like this. So in the same manner, now the operations team will be there. Operations team in the sense, they work with the servers. The operation team is nothing but the team which works with the servers. There are so many different types of servers, Windows servers, Linux servers, Unix servers, AX. In, under Unix, you will have AX servers, Sun Solar servers, and when you come to the Linux, you will have Ubuntu, Red Hat Linux, and SUSE Linux. Like that, there are so many things. And when you come to the Windows, for Windows also, there are several server operating systems are there. Windows Server 2008, 2016, 2012, 2019, depending upon the server that you are using. So like that, there are so many different, different operating systems out there and different depending upon the team. So uh, one team will be working with the Linux operating system. Then they are called as Linux administrators. One team will be working with the Windows operating system. They are called as Windows administrators. And some teams will be working with the VMware. So to develop the, we will discuss about this VMware in the later on part as of now. But like this, we depending upon the operating system which they are working, depending upon that, the again the teams are going to divide it into Windows team and Linux team. And then some teams will be there where they have to take the complete backup of your server. So they are called as backup teams. I am talking about very big organizations, guys, not the not about the startup companies. In startup companies, I don't know whether you will have all these things or not. But if you go for an MNC company, there will be the backup team administration team windows team like this. there are so many teams will be involved into this operations so you will have the backup team again you will have some subdivisions into that net backup and normal backup teams and there are so many backups are available so like this in an it service company you will have these many sectors in an it service company you will have these many sectors either you can have the development team operations team like that you will have these many sectors when you come to the non-IT service, which is not related to your computers, which you just I can call it as a, some textile industries or else some automobile industries or mobile industries, those are all comes under the non-IT sectors. Okay. Now, for example, there are some hospitals out there, banks are there. These are all comes under non-IT sector. For example, there is a bank. For example, there is a bank. Now, this is a non-IT sector company. I will simply make it as, uh, yeah, non-IT, okay? So, uh, it might be a banking, banking, it might be a banking company or also it is a bank like SBI or HDFC, ICFC, whatever the bank name that you will call, there is a bank. Okay, so this people who are working in the people who are who are working with the bank, they don't know how to create the application. So what bank people will know, what bank employees will know, bank employees will know about the transactions, which person has deposit, which amount, how much amount, and which person has uh, withdrawal, how much amount, and what is the total uh, total account lecture and all the things. They know about completely about the accounts. They don't know about the IT. They don't know about uh, how servers will work. They don't know about the programming language. They know only about, uh, so I'm not, uh, I, generally, I'm saying that uh, maybe some banking persons may know about the IT, IT also, but generally I'm saying that whoever are working in the bank, they don't know about the IT terms. So they cannot develop the application. So as of now, before pandemic and after pandemic, when you check into this or else everything, whenever the government, the government has changed in 2014 when BJP has, so, sorry, when a new government has came into the uh, came into the ruling, they started a new concept called as digitalization. Digitalization, which means we are not into the paperwork. Everything, the transaction, every transaction must be digitalized. Applications must be digitalized. Uh, sorry, the transactions must be digitalized. So nowadays, nobody are using the cash. Nowadays, everybody are maintaining the cards or else everybody are using phone pay, G pay, etc., etc., etc. So everything is now digitalized. If you want to purchase anything previously, uh, when if you go back 
to that 10 years back or else uh, if you go 15 years back if you want to purchase some uh, cloths for you or else some um, any 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 product so you will reach to the nearest store and purchase it but nowadays what is happening everything has become the becoming into the e-commerce if you want anything just take click away you don't need to go outside of your home just by sitting into your home you can order anything digitalized so everything is converting the entire environment is converting entire environment is into the hands of it only so now the technology is getting so much exposed the technology is improving a lot so in this in this process now for example if a bank is there and they are not digitalized so if they don't have any internet application they don't have any android application they did not develop that so there won't be any growth inside that bank if the bank has to grow then automatically it should be the customer friendly so what this non-it sector people will do the non-it sector people will tie up with an it service company with any it service company either it might be a tcs with pros infosys or else uh, ICICI, IC, 3, 3i Infotech is there like that. There are so many IT service companies which are helping for the non-IT sectors. So this bank will tie up with an IT service company. What they will provide, they will provide the IT services. So what they will have, they will, uh, they will write a service level agreement. They will write an agreement with the bank saying that, okay, so what is your requirement? So now the banking person, whoever the manager or whoever the main MD for the bank, he will say the requirements. So I, I want to develop an app, an app for my bank, for my customers. I want to develop an app for my customers so that it will be user friendly so that my customers will do so many transactions through the app. So they, I should have, I need to have a uh, customer friendly transaction application. So what they will say, they will provide you the complete details. So uh, this is this should be there should be some login page. The login page should be designed like this. Everything will be said, cluster clear to the IT service company. When they say everything clear to the IT service company, what they will do? They will assign this application responsibility to the development team. The IT the IT service company, whoever the head is there, they will assign the uh, assign this to the development team. When they assign this this project when they assign this project to the development team they will develop the uh, they, de they will develop the application by writing the code by writing the code uh, either it might be in bootstrap html android code or else it might be java application it might be python application i don't know it might be so many different types of languages has been evolved perl go so many so many languages are there go is also one of the language which is into the it company so depending upon these languages, the development team will develop the application. And once they have developed that, they will forward it to the testing persons. So the testing people will do the manual testing, either it might be, they will go with the Selenium manual testing, or also there is a, some tools like Sonar Cube. So with the help of those tools, they will test all the bugs and all the things. Once, they, once the bugs are cleared out, then the application will be moved into the hands of operations team then the application is moved into the hands of operations team. Guys, you need to understand, I am telling you this because uh, before the DevOps, before the DevOps is entered into the IT company, I'm just be very sure here. I'm just telling you about these things before DevOps is introduced into the IT. So now what they will do, they will forward the application to the operations team. So now what operations will team will do here is, so they will they will install this application in such a servers called as UAT servers. What are these UAT servers? UAT means user acceptance testing, whether the application will run in the production or not. Why? Because the servers which are used by the development people, the servers that are used by the development people are different. When you come to the operations team, the servers that are used by the operation team are different. There might be mismatch between the servers. If there is if the environment is mismatched. So they will be, for example, the developers will run their application if they are developing any Java application, just for time being, I'm saying, if they are running any Java application. So they will be running the Java application in Java 17 runtime, Java 17 environment. But when you come to the operations team, when, when you want to install that application in the operations team or else in the operation servers, in the production servers or else any UAT servers, they will be using only Java 11. So there is a compatibility issue. Compatibility issues will be occurring. So what is going to happen? 
here the operation team will say that the application is not working fine again the development with team will say that the application is working fine again when they test in the in the servers again they said that the application is not working fine so there will be some uh, coordinations will be happening between the development team coordination i am not saying about the fights i am saying that there will be some coordination which is happening between the dev development team and operation team and uh, uh, finally they will resolve all the issues and they will put the application into the production environment production environment is getting the application into live making the application live to the users live to the customers live to the uh, clients who are who are uh, having the accounts in this bank they will make the application to the bank they will provide the application access to the bank and banking people will provide the application access to the end end users so overall or else the it service company may directly provide the access to the end users so this is what happening in the beyond in the inside the behind behind the screens what is happening here is this is what happening any application that you are using that is not directly manufactured by your non it company it is manufactured also it is created by the it service company and they will provide the access to that application overall this will be happening now here what is very important as we are not completely into development so here we are we have to check about this operations why because our entire aws cloud will be depending upon this operations team only the operations the operation procedure the infrastructure development and all the things now the developers will develop their code the developers will develop their code and forward the code to the operations team and here the main responsibility of the operation team is first of all they have to create a server the responsibility of the operations team is first of all creating environment creating environment or else environment to deploy the application to deploy the application so what is the environment environment is nothing but we need to have a physical server and then we need to create a network and we need to provide storage storage for that particular application so how to store the data and for example there are so many customers who are uh, who are accessing the application they will store huge amount of data where we have to store the data obviously the it admins has to check out all these criteria once they check into this now single server is not enough to deploy the application minimum we need to have some three to four servers or else five six servers should be there depending upon the load for example if suddenly there is a bumper bonanza offer has been declared by your e-commerce website or else your banking suppose they say that uh, uh, the interest rates has been very decreased very very less or else increased very high obviously the load will be very high on your banking servers also so you need to increase the servers single server cannot withstand for the load you need to maintain multiple servers so here everything has to be managed manually so either it might be a server either so number of servers we require number of servers and uh, networking in the sense here comes routers switches routers switches not the switches which we are looking who are who are uh, uh, new to the it i am saying that these switches are different switches gateways okay like that there will be several networking equipment will be there and later on part for storage we will have so many equipment like san uh, nas das these type of different storage devices are available with the help of this uh, storage devices networking and servers we will try to deploy the application now guys we are discussing about the old generation we are not into the cloud so i will i will slowly come to the cloud but as of what the first it before you can step back to the uh, back to one decade or else one and a half decade 10 or 15 years back now like somewhere like uh, 2005 to 2010 in between that i am talking i am not talking about 2010 to right now 2023 i am talking about 2005 to 2010 at that particular time so you will have the physical servers so physical physical servers so inside this physical servers so you will have so many operating systems like either it might be uh, there will be different operating systems you will be installing the operations team will be installing that is linux unix windows depending upon the uh, application requirement we will be installing that 
and uh, inside the op op uh, or else inside that operation uh, sorry inside that operating system we are going to install the application okay the application installation will be done into the physical servers once it is done once the application is installed into your physical sy systems or physical servers then what should be happen so these applications should be given access to the users try to try to understand try to analyze this try to explain me this first of all now you are sitting in your home and you are uh, searching sbi bank sbi bank.com icici bank.com for example i am sitting in hyderabad and uh, i am uh, typing like icici bank.com when i type when i press enter automatically a screen will be displayed in front of me and i can access the web application this is the web application which i am accessing but in general where is this application uh, created can anybody say this in general where is this application available yes guys can anybody say where is the application available is is anybody there yeah bharat i am unable to hear your voice sir application is available in the play store okay okay very good very good nice answer any another application is available in the play store okay answers i want answers guys i want your responses depending upon the responses only the classes will be going lively if you don't provide the response the classes will be a dead classes i there will be only one way interaction will be there i don't want that i want the two two way communication yeah answers i just want some answers either it might be a wrong answer or else right answer here there is no quiz program is going on kaun banega ka karolpati is not going on okay i just want the answers yes go on where the applications will be available for the users for example in front of you you are seeing the icici bank application right where is this application available on the server exactly very good so on the server so whatever the servers so right now i am telling you about the same so the application is installed on the servers right now where are these servers located the servers will not sit besides me so if i want to access the servers this icici bank server is uh, it doesn't install besides me the server will be located in a remote location it will be created inside a remote location so uh, for example there is a server for example icici bank server is there it might be created in jaipur or else it might be created in hyderabad in, in somewhere else so uh, you will have where all these servers are created i will tell you about that i will come to that point also so the application is installed inside the servers so for example this is the server inside the server we will have the application this application yeah i will come to that uh, uh, subhu yeah i will come to that okay so this application is accessible to the clients the clients so for example i am sitting somewhere xyz location so and from there i want to access the internet banking so how i can access i will be connected to the internet i will be connected to the internet and from the internet from the internet there will be a connection towards my server the server is connected to the internet so with the help of this internet i am able to access this internet is nothing but a part of your networking this internet is a part of your networking so here comes a concept called as network so here you can see what are the main topics that i have said you server you understand about the server physical servers why we require the servers to install the applications okay then to make to make that application available for the end users you need to have the network without the networking without networking the end users will not access the application so you need to have the network either it might be a wide network or wireless network we will discuss about that so 
okay done networking is there now the application is available for the end user try to understand this this application is now available to the end user end user is logged into that application and he has done some transactions for example i will make you very clear so that you can understand it very easily i will come to your uh, your understanding level suppose uh, nowadays everybody are using instagrams nowadays everybody are using facebook facebook became older previously when i used to when i used to work or else when i used to use my social media account at that time i used to have orkut account but later it has been changed to facebook and later nowadays it has been converted to instagram i don't know next uh, which so social media application will be coming into the pictures but when you go back to that or else whenever you are using the instagram what you will do for anything nowadays it has been fashion to everyone that for each and every small thing take a picture upload into the instagram so whenever you are uploading that data whenever you are uploading that picture picture is nothing but a data now you are uploading that data into the account where is this account created obviously the account will be created inside the servers okay so these servers are connected to the storages these can these servers are connected to the storages and whatever the data that nothing but the database storages or else i can simply call them as databases so these are connected to these storages either it might be a sandbox or else nas or else das either it might be so many there are several types of storages are available so these are all connected to the storages the application is connected to the storages so that you can store your data into this storage so this is how the entire picture comes this is how your entire entire concept comes like so whenever you are creating any application whenever the it service company creating application they require basically they require these things okay one is physical servers pre i am talking about the previous generation guys one is physical servers network and storages storages will comes under san das das okay these are the different storages that we are having now what is the problem why we have changed our paths for example for example if at all if you are uh, if you are going in a small bus now when you go back to 1960s when you compare the buses and if you compare the latest buses for example whatever the super luxury buses or else high end volvo buses that we are using or else sleeper buses i don't know we are we are we are completely the technology has been completely changed the luxurious thing has been changed previously we used to have very very low end models but now we are having high end models so in the same manner whenever there will be some problems with the previous models so that is the reason we are enhancing our models so in the same manner when you come to the physical servers or else when you come to this physical uh, physical infrastructure <clears throat> what is the main problem with this the main problem with the physical infrastructure is there should be some teams to maintain this infrastructure for example let us suppose take the physical servers where you are installing your application the physical should the physical server should be monitor the physical server should be maintained you have to maintain the server server maintenance is there what are the physical servers that you are having any server any computer or server so what are the basic components that create uh, that will create a computer or else uh, a server what are the different components that we will use to create the servers or computers resources simply i will call them as a resources what are the resources that we will use to create the servers or uh, computers resources guys which resources we will be using do you have any idea about that exactly exactly very good uh, subhu any another any another answers subhu said that we require cpu ram and i will add hdd also so that will comes under the storage these are the requirements these are the these are the requirements memory will comes under ram only anyways so these are the require minimum basic requirements to create a computer now when you are you are creating the computer cpu ram and hard disk are utilized to create that computer they will not be permanently stored as it is they will not be permanently safe so everything whatever the object that you are using that is not permanent 
at a particular time automatically they will be uh, they have to be maintained for example if at all if you are using a bike if there is no maintenance what is going to happen the bike will come to shed within within a, within one year the bike will coming into bore within one year or two years the bike will not be if may if it is not properly maintained you cannot use that bike why because the parts will be rusted so i cannot say that so in the same manner whatever the computer computer peripherals that you are using so that should be maintained whatever the cpu you have to change some sometimes you have to change the cpu sometimes you have to change the ram so everything should be maintained and after 5 years the maximum warranty that a particular server uh, or else servers provider or else any vendor the vendor will provide either it might be a dell vendor hp vendor any vendor will provide maximum of 5 years of warranty so 5 years of warranty will be there for your servers after 5 years you need to do the maintenance or else you have to get a new server this is one of the very biggest problem purchasing a server is just not a small thing you have to spend lot of money that is the first thing manpower should be very high when you compare to this you need to have very high manpower so so many people should be working so many people should be working and they have to shift wise they have to they have to work so the manpower will be required very high so this is one of the problem with the physical servers and uh, next one is maintenance monitoring you have to monitor the application all these things will comes under will be the limitations for your physical servers and the next one is uh, moreover for example there is a physical server okay there is a physical server and inside this physical server i installed an application i just created an application and i installed the application inside this physical server just try to understand the concept here this is the application which i have installed and the application is a startup application at the at the starting point at the starting the application is not very successfully went suddenly what happened there are some enhancements in the application enhancement means additional features i have added some additional features which is very very likable or else the clients the customers who are using the application they like the application very well and automatically what happens the number of uh, clients or else the number of customers who are using this application has been suddenly increased so what is going to happen number of connections to this application will be increased number of persons that are accessing the, this application will be increased so the load on the application will be huge so when the load on the application is huge then automatically the server will go down so to overcome this problem what i have to do i have to purchase an identical server i have to purchase an identical server same server i have to purchase depending upon the load i have to purchase the servers so this is also costly for me this is also very costly for me so these are all the limitations that are that are uh, that are happening that are happening by having the physical servers so to overcome all these problems to overcome all these problems so there is a new concept that is introduced into the it world there is a new concept that is introduced into it world that is called as virtualization so this is the new concept which is introduced into the it world virtualization virtualization in the sense for example what we are going to do just for example if i say that if you are having a very big home very big land and you are cre and you are constructing only a single room inside that very big land suppose you are having a one acre of uh, land is there and if you are constructing only single room in that and you are using the room for each and every purpose you are using the room so it is useless so now what i am going to do i am going to separate that land or else i am going to separate that very big room into small small partitions and i am going to use those partitions for different purposes so in the same manner what i am going to do here here i am using a single server for a single application when the virtualization came into the picture when the virtualization came into the picture this single physical server whatever the single physical server is there this single physical server is now divided into multiple virtual missions multiple small small servers okay small servers multiple uh, multiple servers from the single single physical server i have a multiple a small small virtual machines has been created and i am installing all my applications inside this virtual machines and i am installing all my 
applications inside this virtual machines by installing the applications inside this virtual machines now i can access the uh, now i can create all my apps okay so which is what is happening here the maintenance the maintenance has been reduced the monitoring has been reduced for the it team just for your understanding what i would like to do here is for example if you can see here this is my physical computer or physical server now what i want to do i just want to introduce you to the virtualization so inside my so this is my windows 11 computer guys this was my windows 11 computer which is having uh what i can say the ram of if you can see the ram is 24 gb of ram is there okay so now what i can do here is i can start a server there are so many servers there are so many virtual missions so if you can see here there are so many virtual missions that are that are installed inside my physical mission so this is my windows server 2019 which is installed in my physical mission this is the another windows 10 mission this is another windows 10 mission now if you can see here inside my single server or all single physical physical computer i am having i am running all these virtual missions so i can install whatever the application that i want i can install that application inside this physical server okay i can run the application from this physical server as well as i can i if i want an another application i can install that another application inside this physical server i can install the another physical application inside this another server so like that what i am doing i am dividing my physical components so if you can see suddenly the ram has been increased why because these three servers these three computers are utilizing my physical hardware so what is going to happen here suddenly the ram in the ram consumption is increased very very high and the cpu utilization is also increased very high so depending upon how many services that you are running depending upon that automatically the physical resources will be utilized and you can run n number of applications depending upon the uh, given physical ram and all the things you can run n number of application in the n number of virtual missions so this is what going to happen so this is what i can say it as a virtualization so when the virtualization came into the picture then the misuse of physical missions has been reduced the misuse of physical missions has been reduced what is the misuse the resources misuse has been reduced so when the resources misuse is reduced automatically there is a profit for the company so like that the virtualization help the companies help more and more companies to uh, to maintain to to optimize the it services to optimize the high it services with the low cost you can provide high uh, enhanced or also high end applications for the end users so that is how the virtualization help the people now when the after the virtualization after the virtualization in the virtualization also there is a problem the problem is there should be monitoring the virtual servers there should be the uh, the users or else the employees must be monitoring the networking storage and everything should be monitored by the employees or else the uh, workers who are working in the data centers or everywhere so there is a, there are also some problems to reduce all these limitations, whatever the limitation that I have stated in the above from last 40 minutes, whatever the limitation that I have stated from the last 40 minutes, all these limitations can be overcome by introducing the cloud environment. So now what has happened here after virtual, virtualization is the primary, is the base for your cloud cloud environment so whatever the instances that you are deploying in either it might be in azure it might be in aws it might be in uh, what i can say gcp any cloud platform all the instances all the servers whichever you are accessing in the cloud platform they are not the physical servers they are the virtual missions generally they are the virtualized missions they are the virtual missions just now i have showed you the virtualization so they are all the virtual missions. They are not the physical servers. Whatever the applications that you are installing in the AWS, all the applications will be installed in the virtual missions only. So the base for your cloud computing, the base for your cloud resources is your virtualization. Okay, so after virtualization, cloud came into the picture. From there, the IT has been turned around. Everything, everything is digitalized from the applications from the high end application to the uh, any small small applications can be created with the help of the cloud computing only this is the introduction about the cloud this is the introduction for your it services
So those who don't know what is meant by IT, how uh, how IT will be working, and what are the different uh, limitations, what are the different hurdles that an IT sector is uh, is facing, I hope that I have covered all the things. So this is how we have introduced the cloud. So cloud removed all these hurdles. Cloud remove all the hurdles: physical servers, networking, storages. You don't need to bother about the, all those things. Physical servers, you don't need to bother. And you don't need to bother about the storage. You don't need to bother about the networking. Everything can be taken care by your cloud only. Those are called as service models. So under service models, you are having IAS, PAS. We will discuss about this in the next class. SAS. These are the service models which has been introduced into the cloud. When they have introduced these service models, what is the meaning of this? Infrastructure as a cloud, platform as a platform as a cloud, service as service or a software as a cloud. Sorry, software as a service. So, like that, different different service models has been introduced into the cloud. We will discuss about that in the next class. But yes, so the cloud has removed all the hurdles that are happening in the physical data centers or else physical companies, physical servers. So you need, you don't need to maintain the physical servers. You don't need to worry about the networking. You don't need to worry about the storage. Everything can be handled by your cloud service provider only. Just you have to worry about your software, whatever the application that has been created, you need to worry about the software only. You need to worry about your application only whether the application is working fine or not. You need to worry about that, whether there is heavy load, heavy load is there, less load is there. If you want to increase the number of servers, so overall, whatever the AWS that we are, uh, that you are getting trained. So these are all related to, if there is a sudden spike in the application, what I have to do, if, there is, if the application, suppose, so, so many users are accessing the application, then the RAM utilization will be very high. CPU utilization will be very high. What I have to do? If load balancing, I have to do what I have to do. So depending upon the application perspective, you have to think, okay. So depending upon that, you are going to learn all this cloud technologies. So you just need to worry about your application only. If the application is installed in this uh, server, whether this is going to working fine or not. So you need to worry about the application. You don't need to worry about the servers. You don't need to worry about the networking, whether there is a communication between the servers is there or not. You don't need to worry about anything. You just need to focus on the application. So that is what I want to say to you. So that is about your IT services and all the things. And uh, if you have any doubts right now, you can ask me. And uh, before closing the session, before, uh, uh, before providing answers for your uh, doubts, I would like to tell you that here you can see. So, your course fees will be 5,000, okay? And if you have any concerns, you can contact these numbers. And these are the bank details, okay? If you want, you can take a, a snapshot or else you can take a screen a screenshot. Okay, these are the bank details or else you can contact to the Microsoft management also. They will provide you the clear cut details for you. And uh, yes, that's about the course. What is the fees and what is the bank details? And when coming back to this, Yesterday also I said you this and today also I'm saying you minimum 40, 45 days of sessions will be there and 40, 45 sessions will be there. And after that, every day, one hour of session will be there. And uh, each each and every session, the session will be starting at seven o'clock and uh, ending at eight o'clock. And the course fees, I, I already said you about that. So this is about the concept. If you have any doubts, you can ask me now. Any queries, guys? Up to now, whatever, apart from this course fees, if you have any doubts, you can ask me now. Questions. One more thing I forgot to say, uh, tomorrow is the last demo. Today is the second demo. Tomorrow will be the last demo. Okay. Yes. Questions. So you don't have any doubts regarding what are the class that we have covered, right? Any questions that you want to ask me? If yes, yes. If no, no, just answer that. I don't want silent candidates in the class, guys. Please, please respond. Yeah. So no, sir, from my side. Fantastic.
any another any another questions questions from your end interview questions for aws right now we are into the uh, just now we are entering into aws guys yes at the time of ending of your sessions or else in between the concept whenever i am saying about the concept i will tell you in from this concept this type of questions the questions the interviewer may ask you okay you don't need to worry about the interview perspective i will tell you about that any another questions okay if there are no questions so that's it from my end if you want to speak anything you can speak or else if you want to ask me anything you can ask last 3 minutes of time i am providing for you that's the time is 9 uh, 747 as this is a demo session i am ending before 10 minutes so from uh, when the classes are when aws when we are diving into aws the class timings will not be like this anyways questions uh, hi sir actual classes will be start from monday right actual in the sense Stack. complete aws uh, i think vpc I think you can complete start. aws yeah complete aws will be starting from wednesday onwards wednesday okay okay why i am saying that because uh, uh, there is a new batch will be adding into you so the complete classes will be started from wednesday okay yeah but from monday the link is going to be changed you need to remember okay. that why because uh, monday onwards i am going to take uh, classes on networking and uh, basics of linuxing with linux will be provided so yeah from okay. monday onwards the link is going to be changed yeah. okay like they they will send to my email right i already yeah, did yeah. the paper they will send they will send everything okay. for you okay. Okay. thank you just contact the management once they will provide you the required details sure sure thank you thank you yes any another questions bharat kavya navin i hope uh, you are uh, i am pretty clear from my end so that's it and have a nice day yes navin do you want to speak anything no no sir no clear sir all clear yeah fine then i hope i am i am not completely in depth into the concept i am just making you comfortable with the it service how it service companies will be working and later on part we will slowly diving into the cloud okay okay guys have a nice day and we will meet in the next session and we will discuss more on the same topic same topic in the sense we will go for the uh, data center architecture and then we will be going into slowly we will be entering into cloud services and then different types of clouds and then we will be going from monday onwards we will be into the networking concepts so my humble request for you is that please go through the binary to decimal conversion and decimal to binary conversion which are very very important for you to learn the ip addressing concept Okay so that's it have a nice day bye guys okay sir thank you thank you